The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This shall be a day of remembrance for you. We will, we will celebrate, celebrate it as, as a festival, festival to the Lord throughout, throughout all generations. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. As, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please join me in confession that we might be open and honest with God, trusting in God's steadfast love given through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, how well you know our hearts, and still you love us. You have loved us to the end. We have denied you, and we have denied our calling to serve one another. We have betrayed you and we have betrayed your commandment to love one another. Pour out your spirit of grace upon us. Teach us to love and serve you faithfully and to love and serve one another by the example you have set for us. In your holy name we pray, amen. We remember that there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from God's love. This is the good news that sets us free. In Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Jesus is in the upper room sharing the Passover with his disciples. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, 
He loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judah's son of Simon Iscariot to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he'd come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him and asked Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. And after he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse that Jesus was telling him, Buy what you need for the festival, or he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he'd gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Here they all are. The disciples are gathered with Jesus to share the Passover. It is a high and holy time in the life of the Hebrew people when they share a festival meal and remember their deliverance from slavery. They ask a series of questions about their deliverance, one of which is, why is this night different from all other nights? We might ask the same question tonight. As followers of Jesus, why is this night different? Why do we remember this meal that Jesus shared with his followers? But even more, what does this meal teach us about Jesus' love for his early disciples and for us? Jesus has his face turned squarely toward the cross during this time. He knows where he is heading, and he knows what is coming. He knows that his betrayer is gathered there in the room with all of them. Jesus has a few more things to teach the disciples before he departs from them. And so he washes the disciples' feet, an act of self-giving sacrifice and service, as a reminder that true love manifests itself in acts of self-giving. Serving others is one of the most important acts of love. Included in that number whose feet were being washed by Jesus was Judas. Yes, Judas. That one who would betray Jesus 
and hand him over to captivity. Judas, who would sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Judas, who would eventually take his own life, unable to live with the shame of that act of betrayal. And yet, even knowing what was to come, Jesus washed Judas' feet and then welcomed Judas at his table of grace. Jesus knew what was to come, and yet there was a place of welcome at Jesus' table for Judas. Knowing all he knew, Jesus shared a meal with Judas. In that act of welcome and love, Jesus reminds us all that there is nowhere in heaven or earth or even below earth that God's grace cannot reach us. Even though things can be horribly and seemingly irretrievably broken, even to the point of death by one's own hand, there is no limit to the power of God to heal and restore and bring love. Jesus reminded his disciples and reminds us tonight that the greatest and most cherished gift of all is the gift of love through self-giving, self-sacrificing service. Jesus wants us to know and to learn to love each other. Jesus wants us to love the lovable and even the ones who we may know seek to betray us and bring us harm. That is incredibly hard work. It requires us to remember that through the broken body and shed blood, we are forgiven and made whole, and that healing and restoring gift of grace is given to all. The Apostle Paul, writing words to the Roman church long after that meal in the upper room took place, reminded them and reminds us now, neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the true depth of the love of God for us all. And that, I believe, is really good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The bread, your body, the wine, your blood, sweet communion, you set a table for us. The crucified Jesus, no greater love than the bread, your body, than the wine, your blood. Oh, oh, oh.
Friends, this is the table of the Lord. From the night of his arrest through succeeding generations, Jesus' disciples have continued to come to this table for this holy meal. As he did that night in Jerusalem, and ever since in all times and all places, Christ meets us here. We are included in this feast, whether we are filled with faith, or emptied by doubt, whether we are first among saints, last among scoundrels, or somewhere in between. In bread broken and cup poured, we remember the full extent of Christ's love for us and give thanks. Come to the table of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, creator and ruler of the universe, to give you thanks and praise. You formed the world and called it good. In the days of Noah, when humankind had become thoroughly evil in thought and deed, you sent the great flood to destroy all that you had made. Yet in mercy, you caused the ark to float in safety. Then on dry ground, Noah and his family and living creatures of every kind were brought out by you to begin again. Beginning with Abraham, you formed a people of your own and made covenant to be their God. When we were slaves in Egypt, you heard our cries, sending Moses to lead us into freedom. You parted the waters of the sea, leading Israel safely through dry ground. Though you gave us the promised land and made of us a great nation, we continued to turn from your ways and betray your commands. Yet in love and enduring mercy, you continued to call us back to you through the words of the prophets. 
we now call out to you, forever praising your steadfast love and glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of glory, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He lived among us, teaching and healing, gathering the outcast and the sinner, welcoming everyone into the way of abundant life. By serving, he taught us how to serve. By loving us fully, he gave the example of how we are to love one another. Even on the night of his betrayal, he loved his own to the end. We give thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine, gifts from the earth, and celebrate with thanksgiving the saving love of Jesus Christ. Accept, we pray, this offering of thanksgiving as we proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be for us the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, bind us in love to the church of every time and place. Loving one another, may we bear witness that we are disciples of Christ and serve others as he served us. With our whole bodies, head, hands, and feet, we give ourselves in humility and gratitude as we await the day when we will share this feast at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For it is one loaf from which we all partake. When we break the bread, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? I invite you now to take the communion elements that you have in whatever way that you have them open them that we might receive communion together. This is the body of Christ. Take and eat.
This is the blood of Christ. Take and drink. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we rise from this table knowing a love beyond our deserving. Thank you for giving us a place at your table, for serving us the bread of life, for offering to us the cup of salvation. In humility and hope, we go now from this night to your promised day. In Christ we pray. Amen. Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face. This is our new commandment, to love one another as Jesus loves us. By this, everyone will know that we are Christ's disciples, that we love one another. Go forth in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen.